Let them laugh, let them weep, let them yell, let them sad Only one must say Let them lay me traps and men to pray To Jehovah me I pray Let them laugh, let them weep, let them yell, let them sad Only one must say Let them lay me traps and men to pray To Jehovah me I pray let I be me instead of playing games For chasing fame, let somebody spread the lack of flames no Living my life to the fullest And shout out my halala to the fullest Let my lungs out I'm still rising up to greater highs As long as I'm Hello, Bonjour Sanbonani. Welcome, welcome to Rise to Greater Heights Network Where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. It is so significant to have a positive mindset, more especially under these circumstances. So this network has the potential to completely revolutionize every aspect of your life and career. I am Dr. Riel and Kunene, and I'm gonna be your host for today. So if you're watching us online, please feel free to, tro to drop in the chat box where you're watching us from and what you hope to achieve from our podcast. Today, we are surrounded by greatness in the world wide web. We have amazing speakers who's gonna share some nuggets on mental health, mental health. So in Alabama, we have um, Cynthia Turner. And in Chicago, we have uh, Aaron Johnson. In, in Georgia, we have um, Bambi Lin. <clears throat> so at this moment, I'm just gonna let our speakers to introduce themselves. You can go ahead, uh, Cynthia. Good morning, everyone. How are you? And my name is Cynthia Turner. I am from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm a life and a health coach. And I focus on autoimmune diseases. And I guess I'm an empty nester and I like to garden and just have fun. <laughs> wow. It's such a great honor to have you, Cynthia, and I am really, really looking forward to hear more of your message. And thank you for being with us today. Thank you. You can go ahead, Aaron, and please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Aaron Lee Johnson, and I'm an actor, comedian, and writer. And uh, I use a lot of um, uh, mindful and uh, mental health uh, tricks and I don't know if you call them tricks or basically tips that mm -hmm. I use and things like that to help me uh, throughout uh, my journey uh, in everyday life and uh, also uh, I've adopted a uh, growth mindset which I wrote book 
books about. Uh, I have them published on Amazon and uh, uh, some great, I have some great advice as far as uh, goals and uh, achieving uh, things, not only, you know, what, what, what others would achieve, but uh, uh, finding your limitations and overcoming or achieving uh, goals within your limitations, which is more important than overall goals of, of maybe society-based goals or career-based or anything like that, just overcoming your limitations. So, so basically about me. Oh, wow. Wow. You wear different hats, really. And I just love the, the positive mindset that you've just applied in your life. Thank you for being with us, Aaron. And I'm looking forward for to hear more of your message. Thank you. You can go ahead, Bambi, and please introduce yourself. You are muted. <laughs> Unmute yourself. We can't hear you. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you, since you muted us, that you were unmuting me. Sorry about that. <laughs> but hi, my name is Bambi, and I'm actually a transplant from Buffalo, New York, to the Golden Isles of Georgia. I'm really excited to be on this um, on this podcast and with the rest of you <clears throat> to sharing our stories. I am a two-time published author. I did publish my um, memoir, and I've used it um to also launch my website called healingthroughstories.com. And I did it, I wrote my story for the sole purpose for others to be able to be brave enough to write theirs. You are the reason why I decided to be brave and have um, be courageous to write my story so all the world could see. I also have on um, one of my books, The Journey of Josephine, Ha, has gone international and I did win a couple awards on my very first book. I am a mother of six adult children with 13 grandchildren and one and one of my grandchildren passed away five years ago. But I am so excited to be on this journey with each one of you and to share, you know, what we have learned and, and to be able to give those nuggets back to people. Oh, wow. Wow. What an honor to have you, Pambi. And really, I, I just love the way you've said it. I, I, I was hoping that you're going to say th 13 grandchildren and still counting. I was hoping to hear that. I usually do say that because there are still some of my children that are being fruitful and multiplying. So, right. <laughs> no, it's an honor to have you. And uh, yes, uh, thank you for being with us. And I'm looking forward to hear more of that message. So Cynthia, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. If you happen to have your own billboard, I can see a billboard coming down there in the busy, busy highway in Alabama. What will your billboard say? Cautious will live life intentionally. Cautious and live life intentionally? Yeah, caution will live life intentionally. Wow, wow, what a profound billboard because I believe the life that we envision is the life we can actually uh, really live. So I believe your billboard is just heading us uh, in, in that direction that, you know, like just live the life you just envision. What a, pro what a profound billboard. How about you, Aaron? Maybe your billboard is already down there in Chicago. Who knows? Uh, what will your billboard say? <laughs> Uh, well, I have a, uh, my billboard would speak honesty and truth, and uh, it would say the road ahead is uh, not straight, it's uh, winding. <laughs> yes, that's so true. The road that you had, it's not straight, it's full of curves, it's full, it's full of bumps, but you know what? At the end, you will see the light. I just love that. I love that. How about you, Bambi? What will your billboard say? I would say that there is healing through stories and the only superhero that you need in your life is yourself because you survived and thrived through everything you've been through. And uh, by the way, I just love, oh, you, we've just mentioned superhero and I just, I can actually, you're a super woman, superman, or whatever you call yourself because it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. One of my girlfriends gave it to me as a gift. And so when I do events, I actually, put the superhero cloak around people and I put the, there's a crown actually on top of it too. I place a crown on their heads and say that fix your crown um, because you have survived. And I put the cape around them 
And I tell them there, you don't need a superhero. There's already a superhero with inside of you. And I take a picture of it, of them standing in a mirror, and then I send it to them. And so it's always, you know, forefront in their minds. Oh, wow. Wow. I just love that. I love that fixing your crown in that superhero uh, outfit that you have. Wow. What a, what a, a profound way of just living, living, just living life. Wow. Wow. So we're going to get started. We have Cynthia Turner. Cynthia Turner is going to be our first speaker. Please, uh, Cynthia, because um, like I've mentioned with your bio, please feel free to just highlight your bio and then take it away. So Kings and Queens, please join me and welcome Cynthia Turner on stage. Take it away, Cynthia. And meet yourself. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> All right, press the wrong button. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to, I'm a life coach and I'm a health coach. So I'm, it's kind of like a combination of both today. So I'm going to talk about emotional health and how it affects your physical health. Emotional health and physical health, they're closely linked and poor mental health can lead to a number of physical health problems. And I'm gonna go over a few. One would be like depression. It can cause fatigue, headache, digestive issues. It can lead to development of long-term conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. And one of the popular ones would be anxiety which can cause simply sometimes an upset stomach, insomnia, restlessness, and difficulty concentrating. And sometimes even chronic stress that can cause fatigue, lack of energy, difficult sleeping, which could be lead to um, sleep disorders like insomnia, sleep apnea. And sometimes it can even get worse, can have weaken, it can weaken your immune system, which would be poor mental health, that can lead harder to fight off chronic diseases such as cancer, high blood pressure, et cetera. And sometimes it even gets you with obesity, which poor mental health can contribute to obesity sometimes. Um, on the other hand, people who are mostly well tend to have fewer negative emotions and are better able to bounce back from difficulties. So you can get your emotions in order, it really helps a lot. It can help you lower your blood pressure and it reduced a risk of heart attacks, heart disease, and sometimes even help you have a healthier weight. Practicing gratitude and meditation can help improve emotional intelligence, which can possibly impact both emotional and your physical health. And one of the main factors of emotional issues is stress. And I'm going to go over several things that can cause stress and give inflammation in your body, which at the end is the reason to a lot of diseases that we have in this country and other countries too. One will be hormones. You spend your, when you experience stress, your body releases hormones like cortisol and um, to prepare for a fight or flight response. And in short bursts, um, cortisol can help limit inflammation and boost immunity of pro-inflammatory substances. Also, um, immune systems like chronic stress can decrease, I'm sorry, decrease the number of white blood cells to help fight infection. And you know, there's a lot of infections going around, the seasons are just changing. And you wanna make sure if you can just decrease your stress because this can make your body more vulnerable to viruses, infections going around this year. And one other thing that I don't know people knew that um, the stress can cause neuroinflammation. And what neuroinflammation is, is it's like when your brain's on fire, it can create your body to make what well, you can't think. It's an, if you know, sometimes you get brain fog and you, you like you're going there to do something, you'll come back, you don't know that what happened and you forgot what, what you went in there for, which sometimes it comes to old age too, because I'm getting it more as I get older. <laughs> but that right there, it causes stress in your head and you wouldn't really know you're, you have inflammation in your brain unless somebody had an x-ray and they'd be able to see it. Your immune system, as we go into the wintertime, 
you got intense stresses that can overreact in your immune system, leading to um, an imbalance of inflammation and anti-inflammation. The effects of stress can include physical symptoms like the simple headache, fatigue, digestive issues, and if it continues on for a long period of time, which make it chronic inflammation, it can contribute to development of progression of diseases such as like arthritis, fibromyalgia, and sometimes lupus, which are all autoimmune diseases. So basically, your stress creates a lot of problems, including inflammation in your body, which makes you sick. But I'm going to give you some positive facts about emotional health. If you have good mental health, you can feel happy, confident, hopefully, and generally satisfied with life. You're likely to feel connected to other people and to be making a contribution to society. You might also have a sense of meaning, of purpose, and a feeling of being at peace. And some good emotional health examples would be take time, plan time with your family and friends. I don't care. It doesn't have to be a holiday. It can just be a weekend, a barbecue, or just play Monopoly at home. Just something, family, time, and friends. And one thing that we do all the time, neglect negative safe talk. Half the time we talk ourselves out of issues that's inside of our head. There's not even nowhere else. Nobody else done it. We did it to ourselves. Um, another one would be process difficult emotions provide coping skills for the in the moment struggles. For example, would be you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off. You have a choice how to deal with that. And you've used good coping skills. Hey, everyone lives to talk about it the next day and there's no drama for that. You just let it go. You have to learn to set goals and celebrate achievements. I don't care if you're like, okay, at the beginning of the year, you said you wanted to lose 50 pounds. Okay, you didn't do it, but you started now in November and say, I'm going to lose 10. And you lost two so far because November is not up. Celebrate that small moment. Don't get yourself down. Don't beat yourself up. Another one would be, <laughs> right, that would be create boundaries because, hey, your opinion might not be someone else's opinion, but you have to love them anyhow. And sometimes you have to love people up close and some get to love up in the distance. And you have to learn to create healthy boundaries so people can succeed and keep the stress level down and keep love and, and be with your family. And sometimes you have to forego substance and monitor use. I know of me, I always take a break from social media. I take time off from friends. I take a friend off from family. I, Sometimes I just not nothing thrown, just sometimes I just need a mental break. And it's good to take a mental break. It, it keeps you emotionally healthy. So that's a good thing to do. If you don't do that, you have emotional stress symptoms. It would be like headaches, migraines, skin problems like rashes and acne, heaviness in your chest, increased heart rate. But I'm going to give you seven ways to help manage that stress. Get some sleep. Exercise early. Exercise regularly. If it's nothing but a 10-minute, 20-minute walk down the street. Find and build a social support system. If it's just a couple of friends, find someone that you can talk to. Don't keep yourself a secret because that you're holding the stress in your body. Set priorities. Whatever your goals are, set priorities and actually work through them. Don't write them down and don't do them. Actually set goals and priorities that you want to do for yourself. And show compassion for yourself if you mess up. Don't beat yourself up. You schedule regular times for relaxing activity that use mindful breathing exercises. And if all else, seek help with family, friends, or a counselor if that is needed. There's no shame. Get the help any way you can. And I can help you with your life and health goals. Um, we can come up with a plan and I can help you execute them. We have individual and group plans available. I can help you customize a plan to help you get a healthier you 
working through autoimmune disease or just regular life issues. And you can find me at The Missent Show on Facebook and The Missent on Instagram. Thank you for your time, Dr. Real. Oh, wow. Wow. What a message around um, how to manage stress, like the healthy living. You've mentioned the effects of stress that yeah, you can say you can start seeing like uh, the fatigue, fatigueness, uh, digestive uh, system problems like you can't digest uh, very well. But you've mentioned uh, after your message, you've mentioned the positive side of emotional health. You've mentioned that if, if you decide to take time, plan time to be with your family, plan time to be with the loved ones, get sleep, uh, set priorities and uh, set those boundaries because like you've mentioned that someone else's opinion about yourself, it's not who you are really. So it's always good to set those boundaries. What a profound, much needed message. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for sharing such a profound, much needed message. Thank you. Thank you. So now from Alabama to Chicago, where we have Aaron Johnson. So since diving into the world of commodity, commodities in the bustling financial district of Chicago in 2006, Aaron Johnson has been navigating the intricate web of financial markets with an, uh, a keen eye and a penchant for strategic investments. He has honed his skills over two decades, mastering the art of portfolio management. Throughout his career, Aaron has primarily focused on ETFs, leveraging their diversified nature and liquidity to capitalize on market trends and opportunities. With a disciplined approach and a deep understanding of market dynamics, he has uh, consistently navigated the ebbs and flows of the financial landscape, steadily growing and uh, preserving his wealth. Beyond the world of finance, Aaron has found solace and uh, joy in the realm of entertainment. Acting and comedy serve as his creative outlets, allowing him to explore different uh, facets of expression and uh, connect with audiences on a more personal level. While finance uh, may be his profession, the stage is where Aaron truly come alive, infusing each performance with a blend of wit and charisma and genuine passion. Whether he's uh, analyzing market uh, trends or delivering a punchline, he approaches each endeavor with the same level of dedication and uh, enthusiasm, striving to make a meaningful impact in both the financial and entertainment spheres. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Aaron Johnson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I pre appreciate the introduction, uh, Doctor. And uh, thanks again. But um, I uh, I created a lot of books, and um, I use KDP as the uh, platform. Uh, so my books are on Amazon under the author Aaron Lee Johnson, just like the name here. And I created a bunch of finance books. I've been into finance for a while. I uh, used to work for uh, State Farm. So as an insurance, so I was down by the Board of Trade and Commodities back in the uh, 2000s, and uh, I learned a lot. I wanted to pass a lot of the information on to people that would like it. Uh, most of the books um, uh, are on uh, things like ETFs or indicators, uh, basic books like the big book of ETFs or the big books of stocks give you some fundamental uh, foundation knowledge on investing in those uh, types of um, investments. Um, I do get into some specialized niches on the books uh, with the indicators, and I'm in a project right now uh, with the help of artificial intelligence to create books on 10 of the top uh, uh, indicator combinations and how they affect uh, investments. Uh, the indicators are 
uh, something that you rely on to give you a buy signal or a sell signal uh, to um, invest in, um, uh, in, in any investment in, in uh, instruments uh, over the course of whatever time frame you are, which might be day trading, which is 24 hours or a session, uh, swing trading, which might be days, weeks, or months, and then long-term investing, which might be for years also. So I kind of give a, a good overview on pretty much everything with my books uh, on the indicators. And I got about, I got a bunch of books more, <laughs> more to create I'm working on right now. But uh, besides that, I, I do act and I've been an actor regularly for about eight years. And I've been in the movie Candyman, which is Jordan Peele's movie that he wrote. Uh, I also was in a movie called Most Guys Are Losers with uh, Miro Servino, Paul Servino, Andy Buckley from The Office and Keith David from Something About Mary. Those are all award winning actors, or at least a couple of them are. Uh, Miro Servino and uh, Keith David are uh, Emmy winning actors. So, uh, yeah, I always have fun doing acting. It's just so fun. I, I don't get a lot of jobs because that's the way acting is as a uh, as a minor character or maybe a B actor or whatever you want to call me. But um, I do comedy and comedy gives me a chance to do stand up anytime I want. I can do it every night of the week on open mics or get in a show. Uh, so it's always fun to do. And uh, there's a lot of uh, things that I've done um to prepare myself for uh what what I do uh and I just want to kind of comment on Cynthia's comment um about um about self talk and things like that sometimes we can be our worst enemy and uh we 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 have that voice in our head that might uh uh criticize us or put us down and it's always uh Good, you know, just to keep going forward, even though you have that voice that might uh, that might say you're not good enough, you can't complete the school or you can't do that. And that's what I like to work through. But I do a lot of stuff. This is a mental health program. So I do want to talk about mental health, which is very important to me. And I think the most important thing that I do for mental health, first off, is sobriety and being completely sober from substances. The only thing I do is uh, maybe caffeine, but it gives me the clarity and it gives me like a good sense of reality. When I, when I use subs, I used to use substances regularly, particularly alcohol and sometimes drugs, and it would give me a distorted, distorted sense of reality. And I, I just couldn't function well when, when I did that. And I actually uh, used alcohol a lot where I had to go to Alcoholics Anonymous and uh, and uh, and get sober. But um, I did it in Alcoholics Anonymous. I was introduced to meditation and meditation. I do every morning. I do it for uh, maybe about 15 minutes every morning. And it gives me the it clears my mind. I might uh, do some readings, uh, stoic readings or Christian readings to uh, chant back and forth in my uh, meditations to kind of explore the meanings of things that I read. And I do daily uh, readings also. But uh, a lot of the uh, stuff that I was doing, uh, you know, I have certain limitations uh, mentally and physically, and um, I'm able to go and sometimes go past those limitations with the goals that I do set. And I use SMART, which is S-M-A-R-T, the acronyms, uh, to set goals. I set milestones, and uh, I always celebrate all my wins. I celebrate the milestones and the big wins with the big prize. I try to stay away from sugar. I don't eat sugar anymore. So I don't give myself sugar as a prize, but I do uh, give myself something I like for for that. And I always always I, I focus on the journey rather than the goals. And I work at being consistent every day to meet a goal that applies to that that major goal. And that's what I do. And I reward myself every day. I, I, I go down to McDonald's and have a sugar-free start, a uh, sugar-free vanilla coffee after I complete my goal. And uh, that's what I do. That's my incentive. 
But uh, it's consistency, you know, doing what you need to do every single day and making sure you get in the habit of doing <laughs> what you need to do. So, and uh, also, Cynthia, you talked about boundaries. That is a very healthy thing to do is set those boundaries. And uh, it's very healthy for somebody to express those boundaries to somebody that that wants to uh, cross those boundaries and stuff. And I know I do a lot of hard work and I'm always working and I find myself alone all the time or with people that don't even have a mindset that, that don't even have goals or anything. So I don't think it's a problem to go out to eat alone. I do go out alone, do stuff alone and everything like that. The, the other thing I do is reflections and gratitude at the end of the day reflect on the day, what I could and could not do differently and things like that. And then uh, give gratitude for everything I have. So that's. Uh, well, that's <laughs> wow. Wow. What a message. Erin, you've meant, you've started, you, you started sharing about your, your story of uh, addiction anyways, and uh, how you recovered. And then uh, you, you, you've shared on meditation and mindfulness that in order for you to progress in that area, you have to be very consistent. You have to be very consistent. And uh, with you you, 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 you set those goals. Like you mentioned that you, you, you use the smart, you set the goals, you measure them. And uh, you always celebrate your small wins, of which means really it, it, it is required in each and every person's life that just celebrate your small wins so that... Uh, it, it goes with gratitude. Yeah, you've mentioned it goes with gratitude because the the, the, the moment you celebrate your small wins, it encourages you it, it encourages you to do more. What a profound, much needed message. Thank you so much, Erin, for sharing such a profound message. Thank you. So from Chicago, we are going to Atlanta where we have uh, Bermeline. So it took her 32 years to accept the name she was given, but now she say her name with pride. So Bermeline is a mother of six adult children, 13 grandchildren, and still counting. Ever since her seventh grade teacher told her that she has a gift to write, she has never stopped. Bermeline has Public, has two published books and many more to come. Her passion is people sitting around a table and listening to their stories and uh, hoping her story gives them a little of hope that, storm, that, that storms don't last and we will always get to the other side. She has worked in industries that give her the opportunity to speak to lots of people and hear lots of stories. When we hopes to change lives, one life and a door at a time. She believes that purpose is everything. She's saying that when you find it, run with it and make a difference for the kingdom. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Bambi Lin. Well, thank you so much. It it says that you usually save the best for last, but your other two, you know, the other two guests were pretty amazing. So I definitely don't think that you saved the best for last. So I just appreciate, you know, being on here and hearing, you know, your techniques and how mental health has touched you and what you have done, you know, for our society, you know, in using those techniques. I love stories. And I think that the stories is what brings us together. The more that we are open and the more that we begin to tell our stories, the more that we connect together because stories, you know, they cross lines. They cross, they cross the lines of, you know, from demographics to cultures, because there are stories that I went through that somebody else has also gone through. I love to tell the the, I love to use the word picture of the monarch butterfly. You know, when the monarch butterfly, you know, puts her egg, you know, on the milkweed, that caterpillar has everything that they need to become a butterfly. But the caterpillar has to walk through the process of being able to get to the point of going to the chrysalis. So he has to, he's walking on, on his legs and instead of flying. And I think that sometimes when we, when the, 
when the butterfly, when the caterpillar goes inside of the chrysalis, there's things that happen with inside of that caterpillar. It is reminding him continually that he's a butterfly, that he's a butterfly. Because as he's walking through the process of, of coming to that point of the chrysalis, he doesn't believe that. And so he has to be put inside this chrysalis and he has to be able to be go through all these things because he has to put on the mind of a butterfly. And when he finally gets to the point that he understands and knows that he's a butterfly, he emerges out of the chrysalis and he gets to go and, and now he's a butterfly. And I think that sometimes in our lives, we forget who we are because of the trauma that we have been through. Sometimes we forget what our purpose is and what our destiny is because we have fallen into the pit. Sometimes other people have thrown us into the pit. Sometimes we have allowed ourselves in the pit. Sometimes we have believed the stories that people have told about us. And I love, Cynthia, that you said that. There is a, a motivational speaker named Brianne Brown. Most of us probably know who she is, but she says, that women tell ourselves stories 60 to 70 times a day. Stories that are not true about ourselves, but stories that have created an inner being that we need to set free. And so the more that you realize that you need to stop telling yourself the stories of your past, the story of your trauma, the story of the things that have that you have been through, the more that you continue to do that, the more that you be able to be set free to really tell the true stories of who you are. And, you know, and I, I think about that. I think about the story of even the um, the oyster, that oyster has to go through some distress that oyster has to go through the parasites trying to eat it, the waves crashing it, the sand trying to get into the shell. But then there's a moment that that shell is opened and there's a beautiful pearl that is sitting inside that shell. But that pearl didn't come without distress. That caterpillar didn't turn into a butterfly without distress. You know, when you think about even like the fires of California, there is, a, there is a beautiful flower that is birthed, that grows, that emerges after the fire. And that is called the fire poppy. There is the greatest gifts that we get when we go through the fire. It doesn't always feel good when we're in the fire. It doesn't always feel good when we're in the pit. But we are able to take all those things and in the midst of the storms, Something happens with inside of us and there's treasures and you cannot rebuild your life until you have been through the fire. You know, the ashes to beauty. When you see uh, when you see a building being burnt down to the ground, when I see that now, yes, at first, your first response is, oh, my goodness, sadness. But then your second response should be, wow, we get to rebuild. We get to rebuild and we get to make it exactly the way that we want it to be made. And that is comes with knowing who you are. That comes with us looking into the mirror and realizing that we are special, that we are uniquely made. There is nobody on this earth that is like me, doesn't have my DNA and doesn't carry my fingerprint. I am it. So when you tell the story of my name, for a long time, I did not like my name because my name brought just a lot of discord to me, brought bulliness to me and things like that. Until one day I decided to have a relation, I decided to have a conversation with God and wanted him to realize how mad I was that he named me Bambi. But I went to the bookstore and I opened up the book, the name books, and I realized that my name put together means holy child, that there was no mistake that there was a destiny and a purpose that was planted into me from the foundations of time. Each one of us need to stand in the mirror and we need to tell ourselves that we survived our eight-year-old self. We survived our five-year-old self. We survived our 15-year-old self. And we survived for the sole purpose for each one of us to thrive in who we are today. You, each one of us, have people in our lives that I will never touch, but only you will be able to touch. So you were born for such a time as this. And the more that we tell our stories, the more it sets us free. The more that we tell our stories, we lock arms together and realize that we do not walk this journey alone. And if we can continue to realize that and know that, it stops the stories with inside of us. I have a dream 
that I'm going to walk on a platform and I am going to be able to see the audience as I tell my story and as I tell my testimony, that audience names are going to change, that they're not going to be shamed, but they are going to be beloved. They're not going to be that they're that they are unforgiven, but they are going to be forgiven and they're going to be set free. It is about us calling forth who we are with inside of us, that we look in that mirror every single day and we say, I am a hero because I have survived my life. We don't need to look at anybody else, but we can look with inside of ourselves and know that we are a hero because our stories are unique, but our stories are here to change lives. So thank you for this opportunity. Go out and change a life today. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. The power in our names. The moment you started doing your own research around your name, that was when you took the ownership that, you know what? Yes, I will. I will be from uh, from now onwards. I'll just carry that name because it has a meaning. And uh, you've shared uh, you've shared really on how you have come from trauma to triumph and how God has used you and God has taken those ashes in your life and uh, turned them into something that is so beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Remy, for sharing such. You know, seven minutes is too short. I felt like you 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 are just burning inside. You just wanted to share this message. And I, I just like the way you've mentioned that, you know, there is a certain uh, limit of people that we can touch. Wherever you are positioned, be the change that you want to see. Just be the change that you want to see. Change those lives. Touch those lives. Impact those lives. You, you are surrounded by that uh, such that group uh, be, uh, for a reason. So be the one. Be the one who will bring influence into that group. Thank you so much, Mammy, for sharing such, you know, a timely, timely message. And I believe our audience have been inspired by your message. Thank you. Thank you. So to our audience online, if you happen to have any questions for Cynthia, for Aaron, or, or for Bambi, please drop your questions in the chat box. We will come back and respond to your questions. So it's not going to be a show let me just stop the, the clock first. It's not going to be a show without me, you know, showing up and uh, showing up. So, uh, but before I speak, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my bio with you and then I will come back and speak. So please do enjoy. I want you, as you think about your dreams and goals, to put this down rise to greater heights rise to greater heights because you need to be clear about, about your career goals in order for you to gain guidance on professional development really my goal as a mentor or, or, or as a coach is so simple my goal is to study your current situation identify limiting beliefs and other potential obstacles that you might be facing and then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to pursue uh, success and drive sustainable I think whosoever said that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. Mom. So I think whosoever said that the sky is the, the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. of you so let's all rise to greater heights rise to greater heights dr nam pumalelo real kunene is an international human rights policy analyst who consults on policies and procedures related to human rights compliance she is a highly sought after energetic certified lace brown international speaker this passionate leader holds a PhD with a discipline in leadership and business. Dr. Rial N. Kunene is the author and host to Rise to Greater Heights, a book and YouTube channel to turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. She is also a coach, mentor, and an MC. 
well known for encouraging many to rise from mediocrity into greatness. Her vision is not only to motivate, but also to empower audiences with a fresh perspective inspiration they require to pursue success and drive sustainable outcomes. In a seriously funny way, Dr. Kunene is an award-winning author. Ten times number one Amazon and international best-selling author, her number one best-selling book, Rise to Greater Heights, has inspired and empowered many to pursue their personal and professional passion to become go-getters. As a trainer, diplomacy protocol officer, and strategist, Rial believes that we are in full control of our choices. Her mission is to meet the needs and transform lives of her clients and her audience. She is also a true advocate for creating new policies that uphold human rights and prevent human rights violations. Dr. Kunene's purpose is to teach everyone about human rights and help organizations understand and promote human rights. Her goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs, then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. This change maker, trailblazer, and revolutionary is pushing boundaries and creating a real change worldwide. Like a phoenix that never accepted defeat and rose from its own ashes, she wants to challenge you to unleash your greatness and rise to greater heights. Dr. Rial N. Kunene wears many hats. As a professional certified sales manager, CEO, certified travel counselor, publisher, medical aesthetician, philanthropist, and a commissioner for oaths, following her dreams gave her purpose to see her goals through and understand that she does have everything she needs to reach her full potential. Her everyday message is that your journey to be a better person starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core will make you understand that you are the only one who can accomplish your dreams. Hebrews 11, Psalms 27 and 40 keeps her to rise to greater heights. The sky is no longer the limit, but now the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Kings and queens, please join me. Welcome, Dr. Rial N. Kunene. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amazing. Because really, you know, you, you, you've just shed all the nuggets around mental health. Cynthia, on, on that aside, she shed everything on healthy living, on how to manage stress. And then Aaron, on the other side, uh, he shared from his experience on how he actually apply meditation and mindfulness. And Bambi, on the other side, she shared how she has actually uh, she, she has actually came from trauma to triumph and how God has taken the ashes of her life and turn them into something beautiful. She's, she shared uh, on how you can actually impact those around you. So I'm going to tell you that, you know what, in order for you to have uh, that solid mental health, you'd have to maintain it. So maintain a solid mental health. Maintain a solid mental health. If you can just please, please write it down because I believe that we are forever students. We're going to learn until the end of time. Whether you're struggling emotionally or maybe you know someone who is, try and educate yourself about mental illness, including substance use disorders. You have to know the facts and educate yourself, kings and queens. Knowledge is one of the best ways to combat stigma. So take every given opportunity to get educated or maybe share your own personal struggles around mental illness, really. Focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. What do I mean by that is that I mean that owning your life and refusing to allow others to dictate how you view yourself because mental illness is only a part of anyone's bigger picture so fight stigma by choosing to live an empowered life kings and queens you really don't have to see the whole staircase in life to get to the top but you need to take the first step to get to the top as my mentor always say that you don't have to be great to get started but you'll have to get started to become great in life. So get started today by maintaining that solid mental health. So if you are that entrepreneur, maybe who dream of reshaping your, the world through your business and uh, envision uh, several extra commas in your bank account, yet you find yourself like uh, being blocked on your journey to success. I am the answer. Oh, hi, by the way, I am Dr. Riel Ngunene. I am not for the timid, but I am the rocket fuel that your business needs to blast past barriers and rise to greater heights. 
So as your business strategist and optimizer, really, I empower motivated professionals to discover their full potential and then shift them in, into growth overdrive. So from owning two diverse companies to having experiences as CEO and guiding Fortune, Fortune 100 companies and uh, to helping multi-million dollar enterprises, I really have a distinctive talent for empowering high achieving coaches elite startups and business leaders to become dominant forces in their industries because I believe that the sky is no longer the limit, but now the sky is our point of view. So we are all called to rise to greater heights. I just want to encourage you to be the one in charge of your own driver's seat. Be the one in charge of your own mental health. You cannot change the fact that you have a mental illness, but remember that emotional health conditions are always treatable. So there is no need for you to struggle in silence. Don't let the fear of being labeled with a mental illness prevent you from uh, seeking professional help. Why? I'm glad you've asked that because anytime you spend trying to pretend it doesn't exist, you are only draining uh, your valuable energy. So you have to speak out against stigma. Speak out against stigma. A huge part of your recovery is coming to grips with who you are. So don't isolate yourself, but instead consider expressing your own opinions. Reach out uh, to people uh, that, that you trust for the compassion, for the support and understanding that you need. It's a wake-up call, kings and queens. It's a wake-up call to maintain a solid mental health. It's a wake-up call, but when that alarm clock goes off, please, please, don't ever hit the snooze button. Don't be like, I will wake up in the next two minutes. I will wake up in the, no in the next four minutes. You know what? Why don't you wake up, get going, and maintain that solid mental health? Every day, in every possible way, we need to speak up against stigma. Uh, we need to, uh, to speak up to stigma. More importantly, like understanding mental illness, it paves the way for evidence-based therapies and treatment options. We need to understand that depression is so real. It is surreal. So often we think like of warning signs, uh, maybe being the traditional way that they're going to isolate themselves. They're going to stop showing up to work. But the converse, uh, the converse is it can be also be true. How about the ones who are able like uh, to fake it, to smile and carry on a conversation as if, you know, life is happy when in reality they are in their lowest, uh, they're in, in their lowest spot. They feel like, uh, you know, by being uh, open about their situations, they're going to become a burden on everyone. And nothing that they do in life is ever going to be enough. They feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm always the one who is strong for my group. So if I can open up and share about my experience, they're going to treat me differently. It, it is hard for them to open up uh, really to others about uh, depression, about what they are going through. So we, we, we'll have to kind of... Uh, have a way on how, how we can actually support someone who is uh, maybe undergoing that mental health challenges, that mental illness, that depression, whatsoever um, uh, uh, their mental uh, has been challenged. But one thing you will have to understand is that we can't give from an empty cup. You can never, ever give from an empty cup, but you need to fill up your cup first. And then from the overflow, you're going to be able to share with the world. Fill up your cup first by maintaining that solid mental health so that you're going to be able to assist anyone who is just undergoing that, uh, that uh, phase of uh, may, maybe uh, that mental health disorder, that mental health illness, that depression. You're going to be able to assist that individual if your, 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 your mental health is well maintained. So what can we do if maybe uh, a loved one, a friend, or maybe that individual who is close to you has a hidden depression? So if uh, maybe a loved one appears to have signs of uh, hidden depression, you can try to talk uh, with them and uh, understand their symptoms and uh, talk to them about uh, their symptoms and offer like non-judgmental support and advice. Supportive uh, actions it can include like encouraging the person to seek uh, treatment. Maybe you can also offer like to accompany that individual for their appointments. They can see that, you know, I have someone I, I can really count on at this moment. Or maybe you can plan like um, enjoyable activities together. If maybe they enjoy a Zumba class, just 
go with them. Just enjoy the class with them. Or maybe exercise together. Or maybe you can encourage them to begin to socialize with others. Or maybe uh, try and find that support group that, uh, it, that can help that individual. As flight attendants always say that, you know what? Put, put on your oxygen mask first before you assist the person who's sitting next to you. Because if you don't, trust me, when that flight goes down, you will definitely go down because you fail to put the oxygen mask first to yourself before you even help your children. So that oxygen mask that you have to put on today is to maintain a solid mental health because the reality is your journey to be a better person. It doesn't start with your children. It doesn't start with your spouse. It doesn't start with those around you, but your journey to be a better person, it starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core, it will make you understand that you have everything around you to reach to your full potential. So don't ever, ever give up on your heart's desires. You know, just recall this just in case you can't find your way, that you can have the drive within you to become what you really want in life. You know, I am a firm believer of affirmation. So we're going to affirm this together. We're going to affirm this together by uh, placing our left hand on our chest. And then you're going to raise your right hand. Let's affirm this together by uh, placing our left hand on our chest and then we're going to raise our right hand. If you're watching and listening under my voice and then we're going to affirm this together that I can have the drive within me to become what I really want in life. Can you say it one more time as if you have faith in your own powerful voice and guess what? It will echo throughout the whole universe. Say, I can have the drive within me to become what I really want in life. You know what? Just give yourself a round of applause because you can have the drive within you to become what you really want in life. You can have the drive within you to get where you want to be. The drive is just inside of you. It's not from the outside of you. You know, it's so funny how my mom and dad gave me this beautiful, beautiful name, Nompumelelo. I know many when they try to say my name, they always butcher my name, but uh, like how Pembe mentioned that there is power in your name. So Nompumelelo in my own language, it means mother of all success. So you can see that I am really, really challenged, challenged to chase after success, no matter what comes my way, I'll have to chase after success. So if I may ask you, how many of you have dreams and goals that you want to achieve? Maybe let me say in the next six months. I know myself, I am one of those. I want you, as you think about your dreams and goals, to put this down. Rise to greater heights. Rise to greater heights. Because you need to be clear about your career goals in order for you to gain guidance on uh, professional development. So as a coach or as a mentor, like many of us here, my goal is so simple. My goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs and other potential obstacles that you might be uh, facing, and then design a plan of inspired actions to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. I so wish that you can just tell yourself that, you know what, all these amazing speakers have shared more nuggets on how you can actually maintain a solid mental health on how you can actually maintain a solid mental health. But in order for you to go out there and be the change and make a difference, you've got to be hungry. You've got to be hungry, like a hungry lion in the jungle. Really, that hungry lion in the jungle, it doesn't matter what kind of animal comes this way. It doesn't matter if you're that giant elephant or that small squirrel by the jungle. All that hungry lion sees in front of his face is lunch. Yes, it's lunch. And it's so funny, though, because even with elephants, when, what they do when they see a lion is that they run. It's all about the mindset. Once you believe, you become. They already told themselves that, you know what? I am a lunch to that lion. So each and every time when I see a lion, I'll have to run. I believe that's the lion mindset that we need in order for us to maintain a solid mental health. Because I believe that we all rise together and we rise by lifting each other up. We don't rise by stepping over another person to get to the top or maybe tearing anyone down, but we rise by lifting each other up. If you can, please, please write it down. Write, write this down in conclusion. Resilience to greatness. Resilience to greatness. And I know you've heard this before, that your setback is your setup for your comeback. Your setback is your setup for your comeback. So if I can be honest with you, 
I don't know what goals you've set for the next six months. I don't know what dreams you have for your own future. But here is one thing I know about you. You are destined for greatness. Inside of you, God has put seeds of excellence. Those seeds are supposed to grow and flourish. But many people have become crippled by their past encounters. And some have stepped over other people to get to the top. But I believe that with God, we're all destined for greatness as long as we follow his strategy. This is when the growth commences because discovering your gift and following God's idea, it will make you understand that you have everything around you to reach to your full potential. My everyday inspiration, Mr. Les Brown, he once said, if you had to die today, at this very moment, at this hour, what dreams, what ideas, what visions, what goals, what skills, what talents, and what books will die with you? And the late Dr. Miles Montra continued saying that the richest place on this planet is the cemetery because that's where all the goals, all the visions, all the skills, all the talents have been buried. Honestly, I don't know about you, but with me listening to all these amazing messages, it stirred something within me. And th th that was when I, I told myself that, you know what, it's now or never. Let me just go confident in the direction of my dreams, which uh, gave me a uh, purpose to see my goals through and understand that I do have everything around me to reach my full potential. So this year, I'm also determined to rise to greater heights with as many motivated uh, individuals. Perhaps maybe you're that individual who want to start, grow and scale your business. Maybe you're that individual who started writing that book and then you were like, uh, you know what, I don't have time for this. So I'm going to just put it aside and uh, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And that tomorrow, it never came. So if you just want to get started with that book, publish a, num a number one best-selling book, I am here. I offer a free no, a free no obligation um, a consultation call that will help me understand about the issues that you are experiencing and also to see if you are a perfect fit for any of my programs. Because you know what? I don't work with everyone, but I work with individuals who go, who's going to uh, uh, be a perfect fit for any of my programs. So you can uh, visit my website at www.risetogreaterheights.com and uh, book that free consultation call with me because growing up, I didn't have much in life because my father decided to have an added departure from this planet Earth. And I thank God that I missed that flight because I'm still here. I'm still sharing my message. I'm still impacting as many lives as much as I can because I had everything because of my mama's love. And I love you. I love you. I love you so much, mom. So I think whosoever said that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Dr. Riel and Gunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, amazing speakers. So at this moment, please feel free to share your final thoughts and share with the audience how they can reach out to you, how they can work with you. And if you have any freebie that you want to offer, please uh, share with the audience. So uh, Cynthia, the stage is yours, Queen. <clears throat> Good morning again. Um, my social media, you can follow me there to get more information on my programs. That is on Instagram. That's the Miss Cynt. That's T H E M S C Y N T. And on Facebook, I am the Miss Cynt Show. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. You can go ahead, Aaron, and please share with the audience. Did you hear me? Anything I said? Oh, sorry. Okay. Now I, okay. I can unmute. Okay. My, uh, I'm on all social media at funny guy Johnson. That's uh, all the social media at funny guy Johnson. Uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to say uh, before I uh, leave. Uh, one thing is I'm a stoic and I believe that um, you, I believe personally that I don't focus on anything I cannot change because it's a waste of time. It causes anxiety and to focus on things that I can change and how I react. And the other thing I wanted to say is uh, when you're accomplishing goals, when you're out there trying to get success, that not, not to worry about failure, to remember that failure is just a part of the path that leads to success. It's just something that when failure happens, you learn from it, you grow from it, it's an opportunity. 
and it's just on your way to success. It's something that happens, and that's uh, that's the way to look at it. So that's all I got to got to say. And I enjoy being on your show, Doctor. And um, it's uh, it's been a, a great time to listen to everybody speak, and uh, I get insights and everything from everybody else. So I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Wow, thank you, Aaron. And I believe that our audience really they will reach out to you. Thank you. You can go ahead, Bambi, and please in, uh, share with the audience. Yes, yeah, so you can reach me. I do have a website called healingthroughstories.com. That is where I blog each week. And I also allow women or men to blog and to tell their stories. And they would just send their story to josephine.rstory at gmail.com. You can share your story anonymously um, if you want to. It is not something that you have to publicly say this, you know, your name. I am on all different social medias. I am on Facebook, um, which is Bambi Lynn. I am on Instagram and it's Lynn.Bambi. I also am on LinkedIn that you can reach me on LinkedIn. One thing that I wanted to say, I started selling t-shirts. I was, I was praying and asking, what could I, what could be my logo of something that I can make bumper stickers and sell t-shirts? And and God gave me my story, your first aid kit, because everybody's story, and it can be worn by anybody because it's a conversational piece. It's a piece where somebody can say, hey, what does that mean on your shirt? And then you're able to share your story as they are able to start share theirs. So I do sell T-shirts and bumper stickers that, that for the sole purpose of saying our store, my story is your first aid kit. So I would love people to go on to my website, healingthroughstories.com. It's all one word. Sign up, you know, and sign up and subscribe to my website. And each week you will get a story. You will get a blog, you know, that I have shared my heart out to. So I thank you for this opportunity to be able to be on your show. Thank you so much, Cynthia and Aaron, for sharing your insights on things. And I'm so glad that I was part of this panel today. So oh, just remember, there is healing through stories. Healing through your, uh, is it healingthroughstories.com or throughyourstory.com? No, it's healingthroughstories.com. It's all one word together. Healingthroughstories.com. So kings and queens, go out there and grab that T-shirt, your first aid kit, right? It's, t it's the... It, the logo is my story, your first aid kit, because every story is a plow. You're plowing the field for somebody behind you because your stories are not meant for you. Oh, wow. Your stories are meant for the people behind you that are waiting for you to have the courage and the bravery to be able to tell your story. Oh, wow. Wow. I believe our audience will reach out to you because you know what? They need an accountability partner who's going to hold them hand by hand and tell them that, you know what? There is power in your story and your story can help heal the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bambi. Thank you so much to our amazing speakers, really, Cynthia, Aaron, uh, and Bambi. Your time here at Rise to Greater Heights Network, really, we don't take it for granted. I know we're all busy. We're all busy individuals. But for you to spare these 90 minutes to be with us here at Rise to Greater Heights Network, we are so honored. We are so humbled. We just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. And to our audience online, thank you so much for joining us here at Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. I hope from all these amazing messages, from all these amazing speakers, you've been inspired, you've been motivated, and you are ready to rise to greater heights. So do join us next week at the same time, same place. Thank you. Merci. Tia Bonga. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one the same. Let him lay me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. 
that have made me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me I pray let I be me instead of playing games For chasing fame, let somebody spread the lack of flames no Living my life to the fullest man. Shout out my halala to the fullest Let my lungs out I'm still rising up to greater highs As long as I'm still